and welcome to the Health Physics Society's YouTube channel. Today we're going to tell you all about radon, what it is, where it comes from, and whether or not you should be concerned. We'll also answer some commonly asked questions about radon from our Ask the Experts portal. Let's get started. What is radon? Radon is a naturally occurring, odorless, colorless gas that is radioactive. Radon comes from the natural breakdown of uranium in soils, rocks, and water. Radon itself is not very dangerous because it is an inert gas. Most of the actual radon you breathe in does not stay in your lungs and you exhale it right back out. However, radon decays to other radioactive atoms that can be inhaled and deposited in the lung. It is these other radioactive atoms which deliver most of the radiation dose. Radon is frequently cited as the second leading cause of lung cancer, even among non-smokers. The majority of radon-related lung cancers are from long-term exposures at low or moderate concentrations commonly found in homes located in areas with higher than average natural background. Examples include Colorado and Pennsylvania. According to the World Health Organization, radon in our homes is the main source of exposure and, on average in the United States, accounts for two-thirds of our total exposure to naturally occurring sources of radiation. So should you be concerned about radon? The only way to know is to get your home tested. If the radon concentration in your home is below the EPA's four picocurie per liter threshold, you don't need to be concerned. If your home is above this level, you should consider some type of mitigation system. If you're a smoker, your risk from radon is many times greater than the risk to a non-smoker. Check out the links below to find help on radon testing and mitigation in your area. Now that we've covered the basics, let's take a look at some commonly asked questions on radon. Our first question, what conditions impact the measured radon concentration over time in my home? Radon has a relatively short half-life. That is, half the radon present will decay in a bit less than four days. Because of this, radon does not build up in a home over time. Many things can impact the measured radon concentration over time. Major factors include the season of the year, the area of the home where the measurement is taken, changes in the home itself, such as increased or decreased ventilation rates, and atmospheric conditions during the measurement period. Indoor radon concentrations tend to be higher during seasons when the home is closed up, so winter and colder climates. Concentrations are generally higher in the basement or lower levels of the home. Measured concentrations can vary over short periods of time, even if the long-term average concentration stays about the same. It just depends on the conditions under which the measurements are taken. Check out the EPA Citizen's Guide to Radon for more information on testing and mitigation options for your home. Our second question, will radon or its decay products attached to clothing or furniture stored long-term in a basement? Radon is an inert gas. This means it does not react very well with anything. When we breathe it in, most of it gets breathed out without interacting with our lung tissues. However, several of the decay products of radon are like very small dust particles that can attach themselves to lung services, which is the source of the dose from radon. For naturally occurring radon gas in our homes, the radiation dose and health risk isn't really from the gas itself, but from these decay products that the radon atoms turn into. Can these particles attach to your furniture or clothing and become a health hazard? The amount of radioactivity associated with the progeny or daughter particles can never be more than the amount of radioactivity associated with the radon gas parent. This is a basic rule of physics. Thus, assuming your home is below the EPA's recommended radon concentration, the amount of particulate decay products that are available to attach to clothing or furniture is very small and does not present a health hazard. Our third question, what is the risk from radon for a developing fetus? While in utero, your baby is not inhaling the air in your home, and thus they are not directly exposed to radon decay products. Therefore, it is highly unlikely that radon gas will have any effect on your unborn child. The Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry states that no maternal or fetal reproductive effects in humans have been attributed to exposure to radon and its progeny. The National Academy of Sciences report titled health effects of exposure to radon was not able to reach any conclusion with regard to adverse health effects on the fetus. If indoor radon had a significant effect on the fetus, it most likely would have been reported in the extensive scientific literature that has been published over the last 20 years, but this is not the case. And our fourth and last question is, should I test for radium or radon in my well water? 
there's very little risk from ingesting radon. However, radon can transfer out of water into the air in a home and add to the indoor radon from other sources. Radium in water, on the other hand, delivers its radiation dose when ingested. Testing your well for radium might be worthwhile if you live in a geographic area that is prone to elevated radium and groundwater. Examples include Southern Minnesota, Wisconsin, Northern Illinois, Iowa, and Missouri, among other places. Check out the EPA's radon website linked below for more information. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. Thank you for watching. And if you have any more questions, please visit the Health Physics Society's website at hps.org.